Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But the way the way I see it is you don't have to like get locked down once you have kids. I'm so set on getting in. They call it au pair. I'm pretty sure it is. And you get like some hot chick from fucking Sweden. Like my wife can have like a pool boy to look at. I'll get some hot chick that will look after our kid, you know, in Australia. Nice. And and she could have a pool boy that will clean the pool. And that's our eye candy. And then our kids are looked after when we want to go out for a movie and dinner and stuff like you know, that. And sometimes you have a taste. Yeah, a yeah. Sweet <laughs> yeah, but still, you're not playing with fire at all by bringing a hot young girl into the relationship <laughs> at a time when it's very, very fragile and your wife so, is yeah. cutting down 40 pounds of baby weight. Brilliant, baby. I think that's perfect. <laughs> Sometimes you got to just tell your wife, you know, 30 pounds from now will knock some boots. But for now, I'm going with our babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> You can watch if you want. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but like, in all seriousness, like, I, they're so cheap. You just, like, put them in your house, you feed them a little bit of food, and then give them a little bit of a, an income on the side so they can, yeah. you know, a day off a week, and you've got actually a full-time... Like, childcare in Australia is not cheap, particularly if you actually make a bit of money as well. You don't get all the actual extra subsidies and stuff to reduce the cost. No, you're so, right, honey. It's, I've been selfish. Ivanka, eat a pussy for a bit. <laughs> I don't want to go down there after the birth. It's a fucking madhouse. <laughs> I'm just thinking of fun ways to use your sexy Swedish uh, candy. Look, he's brainstorming on your behalf, Pastilli. This is a service we offer. Yeah. That, that seems like a great service. I always, I thought you would say Russian because I feel like Sweden... That's a nice enough country. They're going to probably stay, right? Where a lot of Russian women, they'll get shipped all, or anywhere but Russia, it seems, right? Mm. Yeah, because you've got a little more uh, leverage then. Because if you get a Swedish chick, she's like, I'm going home. This is ridiculous. <laughs> but if you've got yourself a Russian, she's like, ah, better than Gulag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's thinking ahead, do whatever, Kyle. You can do whatever you want to her. Yeah, that's the, yeah. Wild stuff. Man, I hope that you order a Russian girlfriend at some point, Kyle. That'd be a fun thing to watch. At some point, yeah, that hasn't happened. No, that's why I phrased it that way. Yeah, <laughs> at some point. Yeah, that'd be neat. That I can't remember what it was. It was either on TLC or... No, it must have been fucking YouTube like five years ago. There was a whole series mm -hmm. of following these fucking losers. Some of the biggest losers you've ever... Some of the biggest losers, folks. Ask anyone. Let's just make people call it. They're the biggest losers. And these guys would pay to get women from, like, Belarus and Russia and, like, Mongolia. Not, probably not Mongolia. That's pretty no, you don't want happy those country. You know, and shipping them there. And so much of the time, you got What's some frumpy... Up, what's that? Wasn't on MTV. I've ever it seen it somewhere as well. I'm sure there's a, multi a multitude of these shows. I just know that, like, these very attractive women would show up and then a guy who's like five foot four and 200 pounds overweight and you would immediately see in her eyes like just the ugh. Havana you do what you gotta do here like that's what you and you got this like bald humpty dumpty looking motherfucker just ecstatic but then most of the time it would follow him back to the house and then it would ask like two weeks in to be like so scott how is everything going with Havana?" and he's like well we uh, I've been on the couch. I'm letting her get acclimated in the bedroom. Uh, we haven't had any physical touch yet, which is fine, which is fine. I told her we'll take her time on it. And it's like, you go to her and she's like, I'm really just waiting until brother Dimitri show up. He could, uh, you get the green card next quarter or like something like that. It's like, yeah. man, these guys are getting absolutely bamboozled. Which is fair because they're trying was, to bamboozle these women. Yeah. There was one of them with like they were just he was like writing out checks every day, like, here's your money for the day. Yeah. Why was, he, was like, why were they bamboozling the women though? Because I felt like they were getting what they signed up for. They were, but it's like predatory to be like, Oh, here's somebody in search of a better life. I can I can be that shoulder to cry on. All you gotta do is kinda this tacit understanding that we're gonna fuck, you know, and be like it is predatory, you know, to to go after women. The idea way. is that you're able to, because of where you live and yeah. the opportunities that your country will provide, you're able to get someone that you normally wouldn't be able to get. They are disadvantaged it, but by their by their own citizenship. Yeah, big power. In I've always thought this Me Too style stuff. There were two sides of the story, right? Like the, on one side, you've got a guy who's using his position of advantage to get sex. 
on the other side, you've got a woman using sex to get what she wants. Why is it one-sided in this storytelling that we have here? Like these women get a green card and all they have to give up is, uh, I don't know, 15, 18 fucks. <laughs> More than that. Yeah, if they want to do it's... lifetime stuff. But yeah, I don't, maybe you're right. It's just, it, it's, it's street. It strikes me as skeevy because of the kind of guy who is doing it. Like any of the four of us, it would never cross our minds to be like, I got to hit up a Belarusian woman that is in poverty and fucking trying to make corn grow in the killing fields out there. And, <laughs> you know, I'm going to ship her in here because the only kind of person who would do that is someone who is kind of a loser. You know, like they, the, women who already live in the first world don't want to be with him, you know? Yeah. And so he's, he's, using that status he has to take advantage of someone who's kind of in in need and then the other thing is i think that i think what i've seen in those shows is that a lot of times these ladies think that they're marrying a rich american because maybe yes. that's a stereotype in their village mm. right they, they just when they when just just like we have stereotypes you know I, i'm sure when i say japanese businessman we could all draw the same lots thing. of cameras yeah 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 we're, we're all picturing the same guy right now and mm -hmm. so i think when they hear american man they're like, oh yeah, Tom Brady, <laughs> <laughs> and the, and then fucking Humpty Dumpty shows up, right? And he's like, here it is, this is my modular home. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! If you walk down the hall there, no, don't step on the rotten spot. You'll fall clean through. <laughs> and that is the master bedroom. It, you know, they they get a, they're like, oh Jesus Christ, I, my my house was better than this in the fucking village. You know, this is this is no good. Yeah, I, I yeah, that get... is a thing. I, I'm remembering now at least one where the woman came over thinking he was a rich American and he lived in like a duplex, which lots of nice duplexes out there. This was not one of them. <laughs> this was a shithole, just a really shitty place. And so, you know, that, that, you know, that's the risk she took when she met up with, you know, Steve Williamson from, you know, the middle of Arkansas in his modular home. Yeah. I watched one where the guy was like, he had been looking for a long time and like it kept going wrong. And and these services are very predatory. The ones who like, a, it, it's not like you do this. It's not peer based necessarily. It's not like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm looking for you and you're looking for me like a dating yeah. website. Mm -hmm. There's a, uh, there's a, a whole enterprise where you gather the women, advertise them, post their bios on your website and the yeah. men pay them and the, and, and, and there's, there's a, a middle, it's like ordering a pizza or there's something some off the dark like web. Trickery yeah. yes. involves some misleading. Um, yeah. Well, you know, some facilitation, you know, and it's, it's not necessarily always nefarious, but there is facilitation by a third party who's like bringing the women together, aggregating them, putting them in categories like, oh, you want this, this and that. Well, these are the eight women that we think would be good from you. This one's from Czech Republic. This one's from blah, blah, blah. Um, and I feel like. I don't know. It's it's a real skeevy, sketchy kind of for sure. Of scenario, no doubt. But in the end, a lot of times these guys aren't are just looking for love, right? You know, I don't think they're all looking for like a sex slave. A lot of them are just lonely guys. Yeah, yeah. A lot of them are just lonely. That's totally fair. And loneliness can make you do some pretty desperate things. You know, like if if they're one of those guys who's like, I've tried dating here. I've been lonely for fifteen years. Like. I can't do this anymore. I'm going to fucking kill myself unless I get some sort of human companionship. So, yeah, yeah, that part makes you just a sad situation all around. Glad we're talking about this. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, you know, that's a chief export I, in Russia's economy. So. <laughs> I still wonder, though, if there's not some way for this to happen a little more win win. Right. Like. Let's let's take away the Russian bride aspect of it. And just say, all right, I'm, you know, bagel guy or bagel man, whatever his name was, but I'm a multimillionaire, right? So that guy with cash, he can swing above or fight above his weight class. I'm looking for yeah. the term there. You know, he might get a hot chick that otherwise, you know, if they were just looking at the physical and emotional package, wouldn't be interested in him. But when the package completes a little bit, he can, he can uh, fight above his weight class. So maybe the American citizenship and the Russian bride thing, like like you can just pull a little better tail than you could otherwise. And if they went into it wide open and well informed, it would be a good relationship. That's where a lot of people go to Asia. Oh, like heaps of people go to Asia. Like if you know, separated with their like first wife, they go to Asia. You know, 
they're in their forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, and then like they get yeah. some twenty-one-year-old, you know, hot Asian chick, and hey, come back to my country, and you know, yeah, I'm not discounting get... anything in the future, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, that's not an American thing. People don't go to Asia, but I, I can see how oh, in Europe, yeah, very common in Australia. I meant to say Australia. Yeah. Very yeah. common. Yeah, my I friend went to question. Thailand, but, and he insists that he didn't do anything other than kickboxing. Sure, yeah, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll pressure him on it when he's drunk, but he hasn't cracked, so I think he might actually be telling the truth. Okay. I don't know, though. Go ahead.